one was Harrison Ford's prime, probably the first Indiana Jones. Dude, he's hot. First peak, I'm going to say, is the first Indiana Jones. Second peak is going to be the one where he's the president. That's if you, that's when you get into your Silver Fox uh, 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 age where you're... I get you. You want someone more experienced, like Richard you. Gere, but you don't want... Richard Gere has always been a Silver Fox. Yeah, but it's like you want that, but you you know it's Richard Gere, so you don't want not him. not the hamster thing. Yeah. Is that real? Do you think he stuck a hamster up his butt? Who hasn't, honestly? Like pegging with nature. Everyone, I'm Hugo, and I am Jake, and this is the Bible Reloaded. That was a good one, though. Yeah, that was a good pause. I'm getting good at this pause thing. Last, it's like the third episode in a row that we've mentioned your pause. I think it's because I'm I'm refining. Yeah. This Last is... time I overshot. That one was almost perfect. This is it's it's gonna be like your Sistine Chapel. I'll never finish it. I'm Wait. just gonna have to die, and hopefully by the time I die, people will be like, oh, okay. Like Van Gogh. Michelangelo could have done that. Van Gogh with his sigh or whatever. Today we're going to be looking at more of 2 Samuel, because last time, David became king! Yay! Because someone else murdered the old king for him, and then he killed those people because he's a hypocrite in Bible. Yeah. So now we're going to get into some Ark business, and then we're going to get into some naked David business, and then there's going to be like promises and things. Yeah. If it um, helps uh, to digest this, just think of this as like a prequel to Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. It's like the backstory scene that got cut. Mm-hmm. And I'm reading it to you like Steven Spielberg putting you to bed with a bedtime story, stroking you lightly. Anyway, today we're looking at Second Samuel, chapter 6, the ark brought to Jerusalem. David again brought together all able young men of Israel. That's so many able young men. About 30,000. Unless there were tons of cripples and women. He and all his men went to Bala in Judah to bring up from there the Ark of God, which is called by the name, the name of the Lord Almighty. They set the Ark of God on a new cart and brought it from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill Uzzah and Ahio, sons of Abinadab. Is that enough proper nouns for you guys? Because that's all we got. They were guarding the new cart with the Ark of God on it, and Ahino was walking in front of it. David and all Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord with castanets. So it's like a a very Spanish, Spanish celebration. Yeah. And with all their might, you think they're straining the whole time? Like, you think one person had a thing in their brain and it popped because they were straining so hard? An aneurysm? Yeah, an aneurysm. That's what they're called. I'm not a doctor. Oh. If I were a doctor, I wouldn't be doing this. It's a fact. I need to stop letting you give me medical advice then. Just hemorrhoids. Come on. Anyone tuck them back in. (laughs) Just cut them. Just cut them. My ass has not stopped bleeding for months. It'll stop eventually. It just drips into the toilet. Probably because you never had a period before. You're getting them all out at once. Harps, lyres, timbrels, sistrums, and cymbals were also there. All on one guy. All on one guy. One man one, band. Yeah, one man band, and then everyone else with all their might punch dance. When they came to the threshing floor of Nakon, Uzzah reached out and took hold of the Ark of God because the oxen stumbled. He saved it! Yeah, good job, guy, you'd think. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah because of his irreverent act. <laughs> Therefore, God struck him down and he died there beside the Ark of God. But how did he die? Because it doesn't explain it, so let's fan fiction it. Maybe he burst into flame right there, but starting at the tip of his penis. But it, but would it burst or would it just like like a wick? Like he was a human wick and couldn't put it out and he's running around patting his dick. But it won't go out because it's God flame. What happens is it starts as his dick and then when he pats it, his hand sets on fire. Ooh. And then everything he touches with his hand sets on fire. He's like Midas, but fire. Yeah. But seriously, it says his act was irreverent. I don't think God knows what the term irreverent means because he was literally trying to stop it from falling. Because he revered it. So I'd like to imagine if it had fallen on the ground, God would have smote him anyway because fuck you, you let it drop. It's because of his fucking name. It's yeah. Uzza or Uzza or something. It's gross it name. just sounds gross. You yeah. get to die by fire now. Then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzza, and to this day the place is called P- 
Perez Uza. Which means outbreak against Uza. Fucking Uza. At least he's remembered. No. Uza's remembered longer than I will ever be. So <laughs> think about that. No, no. We're stuck a, for as long as the internet's a thing, we're stuck here. Oh, it's like, oh, we're like Zod and in, in Superman. Like yeah. we're, we're stuck in that thing floating through space forever. But instead it's YouTube, which is far worse. Yeah, because people can comment. <laughs> oh god. Kneel before Zod. Faggot. <laughs> Such a faggot, Zod. <laughs> YouTube comment. David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How can the Ark of the Lord ever come to me? He was not willing to take the Ark of the Lord to be with him in the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The Ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, for three months, and the Lord blessed him and his entire household. Why did he... You, just, you know, you can tell over three months, too. Like, those three months, everyone was getting laid. Now King David was told the Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Edom and everything he has because of the Ark of God. So David went to bring up the Ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom, the city of David with rejoicing. So he's like, fuck, that guy got killed. I don't want the Ark. But then he's like, wait, hey. wait, wait. They're, they got laid every day for three months straight with someone different. I have a harem. Doesn't happen for me. I gotta get this. It's like, it's like Lady Viagra. When those who were carrying the Ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and fattened a calf, wearing a linen ephod. David was dancing before the Lord with all his might, while he and all Israel were bringing up the Ark of the Lord with the shouts and the sounds of trumpets. I Okay, I really need to get into this celebrating with all my might business, because I, I have not been doing it correctly. I have been using zero might, because I didn't know that you had to, like, work up, a, like, a huge sweat and, and like, pump iron. Yeah, it's like Warehouse Kevin Bacon. From Footloose. As the Ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, watched from a window, and when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. <laughs> so she, she's John Lithgow. She's John Lithgow, yeah. Well, I guess we have to change her picture now. When they brought the Ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it, and David sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before the Lord, after he had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. That was a long fucking way to say he blessed things. Yep. Then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, a cake of raisins to each person in the whole crowd of Israelites. That's so many like dried... Like, personally? That's so many dried fruits. That's so much. Too many. <laughs> Maybe they were just, like, really tiny. Like, they say cake here to make it sound like, oh, it was really special, but it's like, it's like literally they press a date. They press a raisin into a date. A craisin? That's, no, that'd be a cranberry raisin. Yeah. That's not a, a... a daisin. Okay, all right. When David returned home to bless his household, Michal, daughter of Saul, came out to meet him and said, How the king of Israel has distinguished himself today, going around half-naked in full view of the slave girls of his servants as any vulgar fellow would. This is, this is a window into a Jewish spousal argument. Apparently. Which is weird because he has many wives and, and you know... She's the main one. She's the main one, but he, like, sleeps with other women all the time. But yeah, but she's, she's the one that, like... Has to rub his back. You think that's why John Lithgow didn't want Kevin Bacon to dance? Because he was afraid other people would want Kevin Bacon? Well, I mean, it clearly worked out. Kevin Bacon slays. Verse 21. David said to Michal, It was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father or anyone from his house when he appointed me rule over the Lord's people of Israel. Ooh. So he's like, Oh, that was me in front of the Lord. Remember? The one who let your dad die and picked me instead? Fuck you, Michal. Bitch, I came back for you. I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this, and I will be humiliated in my own eyes. But oh. by these slave girls you spoke of, I will be held in honor. So basically, she comes out nagging, like, David, you know, you're like half naked, you're dancing around, you're making me jealous. I know you have a harem, but the slave girls, that's, that's when I draw my line in the sand. And then David's like... Fuck you, bitch, I'm king. I dance if I want. Yeah. And then he does, like, he does, like, step up three moves, like, with that robot guy. And they zoom in, and it was in 3D. <laughs> it was in theaters. Those movies are so bad. They are bad. And Michal, daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death, which it <laughs> says, but then, if you happen to take a look forward in 2 Samuel chapter 21... 
It specifically says the five sons of Michal in chapter 21, verse 8. So, yeah. did she have chi- children or not, Bible? Inconsistent. Next, chapter 7, God's promise to David. After the king was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. (laughs) Because if I say anything else, you'll probably cut my hands and feet off and hang me next to your pool. This must be what it's like to be Kim Jong-un. You just get just the yes men. Yes, that'd be great. Especially because you're not only a yes man, you're a yes man with unlimited buns. I would like a jet ski park, please. Yes, sir. (laughs) Then Then they make you one. But that night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in it? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day. Well, fucker, they're, they fucking moved around until now. Yeah, he's like, a, he's like an angry hermit that's like, No, I like to live off the land! And now today he's like, Oh, fuck this shit, settle down, guys. <laughs> build a palace for me. I have been moving from place to place with tents as my dwelling. Whenever I have moved with all the Israelites, do I ever say anything of the rulers of whom I command and shepherded my people of Israel? Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Because cedar is hard to move. It's impractical, God. Uh, Also, this implies that God is not everywhere. He's wherever the Ark of the Covenant is, specifically. Which they address earlier, but still, it's good to bring up when they discuss it. Mm Mm-hmm. Why is God such a cunt? Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Fuck you. (laughs) You know why, you asshole. He's such a fucking piece of shit. He found out that you could have a house of cedar. He's like, wait! Why don't I have one? That was an option? God's a dick. Now then, I tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took from you the pasture from tending the flock and appointed you ruler over my people of Israel. See, when he says it like that, it sounds ridiculous. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all of your enemies from before you. Except, you know, you did it with the sword or whatever, but sure. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men on earth. All three of them. (laughs) And I will provide a place for my people in Israel, and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Disturbed? You've been going around murdering tribes for centuries, (laughs) what? That's not disturbed, that's... You're disturbing others, That's God. Different. It's different. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore. <laughs> no. Like, a thousand years ago they were in slavery in Egypt, in the Bible, not in real life, and now they think they're oppressed everywhere they go. <laughs> and they're like, stop oppressing me, as they fucking slaughter villages. It's like the opposite of Stockholm Syndrome. Basically. I will also give you rest from all of your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you will rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to success you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of kingdom forever. Solomon, by the way, is what he's referencing. I will be his father, and he will be my son when he does wrong. I will punish him with a rod wielded by men, Mm -hmm. with floggings inflicted by human hands. This was sounding good for a while, but he was like, oh, and your son will be my son, and I'll fucking beat him so hard. (laughs) Can you not beat my son? No, I'm going to beat him with a rod, a metal one. (laughs) But my love will never be taken away from him, as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you. (laughs) Yeah. It's he's so fucking abusive. Yeah. It's like hitting him with a rod. I fucking love you, Solomon. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. He did not foresee any of the events that happen after this. Apparently, none. Up until unless he's like everything before the whole thing after World War II doesn't count. <laughs> All of that history does not count according to God. None. Nathan reported to David all the words of his entire revelation. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, sovereign Lord, and what is my family that you have brought me this far? Fuck you, David. I'm so sick of his His, humble attitude, this fake humble shit. Yeah, when you go out and party with slave girls. Yeah, there's being humble and there's being an asshole who clearly is... It's like Bieber. It makes you think he thinks way more of himself than actually anyone else does because he acts so humble. Super Bieber. 
Telling you. As if this were not enough in your sight, Sovereign Lord, you have also spoken about the future of the house of your servant, and this decree, Sovereign Lord, is it for a mere human? Oh, David's a cunt. What more can David say to you? For you know your servant, Sovereign Lord, for the sake of your word and according to your will, you have done this great thing and made it known to your servant. <laughs> he has established that the Lord is sovereign several times. He's just, you gotta we, know he's sovereign. We fucking get it. He's sovereign other than the Trinity. I guess. How great are you, Sovereign Lord? There is no one like you, and there is no God but you, as we have heard with our own ears. Yep. Well, you're jerking off God a little bit there, David. You're lot. edging him a whole lot. And who is like your people, Israel, the one nation on earth that God went out to redeem as a people for himself and to make a name for himself, and to perform great and awesome wonders by driving out nations and their gods from before your people, whom you redeemed in Egypt? He is, like... He's saying this all out loud, and I'd like to think that anyone who said these words out loud are like, Wait a second. That doesn't seem reasonable at all. <laughs> you have established your people, Israel, as your very own forever, and you, Lord, have become their God. <sighs> and now, Lord God, keep forever the promises you have made concerning your servant and his house. Do as you promised, so that your name will be great forever. Then people will say, The Lord Almighty is God all over Israel, and the house of your servant David will be established in your sight. Why is he... He's trying to talk God into a thing. Why yeah. do people... If if he's if he's all-powerful, this shouldn't be a bargaining chip ever. Like, they should just be like, Okay, whatever you want, man. Lord Almighty, God of Israel, you have revealed this to your servant, saying, I will build a house for you. And so your servant has found courage to pray this prayer for you. Sovereign Lord, you are God. Your covenant is trustworthy, and you have promised good things to your servant. Now, be pleased to bless the house of your servant, that you may continue forever in your sight for you. Sovereign Lord, have spoken with your blessing. The house of your servant will be blessed forever. That was a really, really long-winded way of saying, Hey, remember when that, that one time we gave that guy three months of crazy sex? Can I have that as well, but forever? Yeah, pretty much. So, David is blessed or whatever, and Israel's supposed to remain forever until it doesn't and then it does again after world war ii <laughs> because a lot of the people who <laughs> made that decision had read the bible self-fulfilling prophecy anyway that's it for this episode thanks everyone uh next time we're gonna get into some of david's conquests because even though they fucking said you're done with your enemies for a while david decides to go make some new ones because that's how he is he's, gotta do you david gotta do you he's not very selective no he's like He's like Nick Cage now. <laughs> like, just, uh, uh, you want to you wanna do a shitty Christian film? I mean, how much are you going to pay me? Pennies. Pennies on the dollar. As long as I get to fly a plane. You don't really like fly the plane, Nick. Steal the Declaration of Independence. Sure, that's what this movie's about. So, everyone, you can go ahead and follow us on Twitter at Bible Reloaded. You can follow Hugo at Hugo Reloaded. You can go ahead and donate to our Patreon. That'd be super sweet. You could also subscribe. Which is nice if you haven't already. We do this weekly stuff yeah, this new graphic sure does turn me on mm. Mm. it's nice not to have to do i forgot it to thank uh in the last episode so i'll thank him now uh izzy asimov uh one of uh, uh twitter peeps uh really great guy actually doing some other secret stuff uh for us that will be revealed in the future I don't know what else to tell you. That's really all the plug I can give it. But uh, should be cool. Should be really fun. Um, and maybe he'll do some other arty stuff for us. You know. Because he's wonderful. So until next time, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this has been The Bible Reloaded. And next week, John Lithgow will learn the true meaning of dance. Kevin Bacon? Kevin Bacon, yeah. <laughs> Seeing Kevin Bacon dance in a warehouse. Punch dance. Oh, you're itching. I thought you were doing a, like a b-boy stance. Like, no, <laughs> arm itch. Oh, okay. You think that was worthy of a? No, of I a didn't. B That's why I was gonna be like, fucking. It's just me. <laughs> this is the stance you think I throw no, up when well, I'm not this. Like this. Like this. Yeah. No, you like gotta, I'm you Marky bring Mark. It up real high. Yeah, Marky Mark. And the funky bunch. And then I, I kill a dude or whatever. Yes. Blind a dude. Whatever. Yeah, he, he punched did. an Asian guy. Did he go blind? I think so. Oh, bummer. Ted's funny, though, so I guess that makes up for it. you think Mark it. gave him any of the Ted money? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. I'll hang out with Can you Walt. legally give money to Asians? <laughs> <laughs>